Okay, pre-calc, let's get going here. We're talking about um, house insurance and health insurance, okay? Um, just going to go through that. You guys are doing a great job. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of things that are common sense with, um, with house insurance. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at some of your... I'm trying to get it so it's not... So quite, oh, look at... Oh, man. Uh, this is... Wow. I'm just going to take a look at your assignments here real quick. Let's reload this bad boy here. Um, dun, 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 dun. Okay. So, um, this is just people's responses to the um, to the assignment. I'll just kind of take a look at some things and throw in a couple things. Location. Um, yeah, natural disasters. Uh, a lot of times they will place you in kind of a group. Um, if you're in an area that gets a lot of hail, lots of a chance for fire and stuff, then your deduct or your uh, premiums will be higher. And what's interesting is to compare and contrast home insurance with health insurance. Okay, you have chosen to live in an area that is more prone to natural disasters, so you're going to get charged more. Okay, neighborhood crime, I could see that. Fire hazards, okay? Like right now, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's going to take take um, 15 minutes for people to get to me at the least, you know, with the uh, even though the volunteer fire departments do a great job, it's going to take them a while, okay? Again, I've chosen this, so then my rates are higher, okay? Condition and age of your home. Yes, I agree with that. Your credit score, now that's interesting. I hadn't even thought about that. Um, maybe they're thinking... Um, uh, credit score is just a little bit of responsibility. If you're not responsible enough to pay your bills on time, well, they're going to just charge you a little bit more to make sure they get their money. Or maybe that just uh, shows that, hey, if you're not responsible enough to pay your bills, maybe you'll leave a space heater on. Who knows? Okay. Um, so, and then we're going to go down to this. This is just one person. I'm not going to say who this is. I think they did a great job, though. This is the way health insurance used to be. Age your premium can be drastically higher than a younger person. Actually, if you look at now, after this Affordable Care Act, it says your health, your medical history, where's my cursor? There it is. Your health, your medical history, or gender can't affect your premium. Huh. Okay. But age, looks like, yeah, you can. Okay. Um, tobacco use, they still are allowed to charge 50% more because it's a choice you're making, okay? And we'll talk about individual versus family and plan category. But one thing I think is interesting is you don't see in, involved with them with health insurance is your health is not something that they can use to charge you more for health insurance anymore, Okay? So that I find intriguing, okay, because, you know, there's, um, you know, so you might have somebody who works their butt off to stay fit, okay, they're fit, yeah, I do a, ni I do a nice job, I stay fit, I eat right, this, that, and the other, then they're going to be healthier. This is not an opinion on my part, it's, you know, it's just kind of fact. Okay, where if you have somebody, I'm not picking on people who are overweight or anything, I'm just picking a worst case scenario. You have somebody who's going to sit on the house, sit on the couch and eat Cheetos and, and eat a lot of fatty foods. That gives them high cholesterol, higher chance for coronary heart disease, higher chance for obesity, which has, which brings things into play um, health-wise. Um, um, higher chance of being a, a diabetic. All this good stuff. Now they're saying that they used to be able to charge this person more because in some cases, I know that there's there's a genetic predis predisposition for some people to be heavier and some people to be lighter. But if we look at this as personal choices, which there is some personal choice in both of these situations, okay, um, they can no longer charge you more based upon your physical ailments or conditions that you currently have, okay? So, they cannot charge you more based upon your health, your medical history, or gender, 
Okay, so let's talk about those for a little bit. And this is where people are starting to talk about socialized medicine and this, that, and the other, where you know you're helping pay for somebody else's medical costs. Well, let's really get sexist here. Okay, this is not my belief, but you know, let's let's go like this. Hey, I'm a guy. I don't I don't have a chance of getting pregnant. So why do I have to, you know, pay a higher insurance rate for like you know, so women who might get pregnant might, should they should have to pay more, okay? So, you know, there's arguments to that that, you know, let me worry about myself and my situation, okay? And there's lots of health things that women, I'm, this is not women now, um, I don't know how I want to draw, let's put a skirt on the woman, okay? Okay, and that's kind of an ugly skirt. Um, I don't know, let's put a top on there too, it's kind of freaking me out, okay? Um, so we've got guys and girls, you know, guys, uh, you guys are just running around with just boxers on, I don't know, okay? I heard an interesting story about boxers the other day, oh my gosh. I'm not going to tell you where this was, but there was some shop program where, um, where a kid was, uh, showed up, had nice pants on, they were going to do some painting. And um, and he didn't want to get his pants all painty, so um, the teacher just allowed him to take off his pants and go through the school the school day without pants on. <laughs> so anyway, so like you know, there's there's things that ladies have to go through. They've got their mammograms, okay, which check out check for breast cancer stuff like that. Guys really don't have to worry about that. Guys have, or females have their their annual checkups for their female bits, okay? Annual checkups, okay? Guys don't have that. So you could argue that women have more health expenses, so they should have to pay more for health insurance, but that's not the case anymore, which I can, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just kind of playing the devil's advocate for the idea that your situation, what they're doing is they're taking such a big pool of people anymore that they are equalizing everybody's risk and costs in one big group. So we've got some guys, we've got some girls. So let's go male and female. And we got some male and female. They're all mixed in, okay? And that's where you get the problems. That's where you get the pregnancies. But anyway, um, <laughs> at least I think. Um, I don't know. Me and my wife don't have kids. Maybe we just haven't figured that out yet. Um, so anyway. Um, and then you could even throw in a situation like this. Like my wife, she has multiple sclerosis. Okay? So she's a female that her costs are going to be ginormous. Okay? But now you cannot charge any more for that person for health insurance. Even though right now her meds are costing, I think, three thousand dollars per month for some health and for the health insurance company, that all gets averaged in, okay? And everybody's going to charge this, get charged the same amount, okay? Um, but it does say that for age. Now, if they if we got a male smoker, I'm going to put it it'll go like this. They are allowed to charge because uh, there's a male who's smoking. <laughs> anyway, um, they are allowed to charge a little bit more for that because that's something they can stop doing, okay? Um, so there's lots of, lots of things that have really changed about the health insurance business lately. You know, so if I, if I just um, open up a health insurance, um, you know, business, um, I've got to consider these people. I can't turn those people away. Okay, you've got diabetes, which is going to give us more complications down the road, possibly. I'm sorry, I can't turn you away. Oh, you were just diagnosed with cancer, um, and your your husband lost their job, so you had to get different insurance. I can't turn you away. Okay? So the insurance business, I find a very high-risk business, and that's why the costs have gone up. They used to be able to say, no, you've got what's called a pre-existing condition. We're not going to cover you for insurance. Okay, and that's causing some problems in actually price inflation. Okay, let's say before if Wendy had MS and nobody would cover her, we'd have to find a way to pay for it out of our pocket. And these numbers, they'd have to keep them smaller 
for us to be able to afford that and for them to be able to sell their medications. So some would argue the fact that this somewhat, uh, if you want to call it socialized or, or whatever, if you want to, it, this new model of insurance has really had some price increase and it caused some price increases. If I used to be able to say, I'll take all the healthy people, I'm going to deny the, the sick people, then my health, health premiums are going to be less. Okay, and I can charge less, okay, um, because the risk for, you know, that health insurance company is going to be less. But now, now I've got to raise my rates to cover everybody, okay, and since pharmaceuticals are more included now, um, you know, in, in, a, in a base policy, well, then now they might charge more for pharmaceuticals. It's an issue. And the issue, the whole issue with healthcare is that here's the thing, here's the thing. One dollar out of, out of every seven, seven dollars in the United States is spent on healthcare. Of some way, shape, or form. That I find amazing. Okay? That I find absolutely amazing. If you consider all the money that gets spent in this in this country, one out of every seven dollars is spent on health care. That's crazy. It's more than on housing. It's more than on um, I don't know if it's more than on housing. I have to I have to research that. I'm just thinking percentage wise, fourteen point two eight percent. Um, I have to look that up, but I think it's really close. Um, it's crazy. Now, as far as costs go for healthcare, and I'll go back to, back to, um, um, home, home, home insurance here in just a second. So what you've got is you've got a single policy. Okay. You've got a couple. Okay. You've got a single plus kids. And then you've got a couple plus kids. Those are all going to be different rate, um, different rate classifications. Okay. And if I take a look at the school's policy, I can just tell you a couple different things. Right now we've got a $900 deductible, I think. Okay. Um, single, I don't know what single costs. Couple, ours is about $1,300 per month. Okay, so basically what that tells me is they're banking on that after my deductibles met and stuff like that, that they feel that their costs, you know, because this right here is $15,600 per year. They're banking on Wendy and I burning up and spending less than $15,600 per year on health care. And we, you know, they need to have that model work. Otherwise, if the average couple is going to spend more than that per year, then they're going to go ahead and raise their rates. Single plus kids, I don't know what that runs. Couple plus kids, I want to say it's about $1,700 per month from that I've heard from other people. Okay. And this is a situation where this is a major, major benefit. I want to say this around $700 per month. I don't know what this is. Okay, I don't think it's quite as much as a couple, maybe like 1100 bucks. Let's just throw some numbers out there, okay? This right here, the, um, you've got to consider your benefits when you're looking at a job. For right now, all of this is paid. The district pays all of this for every single teacher, okay? I think for the, for the support staff, I think they pay... 700 is pay the single rate okay now if i'd go down to fremont and teach i was offered a job down or they were trying to recruit me down there for a job i don't know 10 years ago <clears throat> and i looked into it and um they only paid single so we would have had to out of pocket pay the difference to get up to a couple so it would have cost us a good 600 dollars a month okay it's amazing how much this has gone up my, our costs right now, well, this is the district's cost, $1,300 a month, $15,000 a year, big deductible, 20% copay, which means that I, like we talked about that before, 
I pay 20% of the all health bills up to a maximum dot maximum out of pocket. Okay. When I first started teaching in 1993, okay, this cost was $300 per month. Okay. So $4,000 per year. And it was a zero dollar deductible, zero percent copay. They paid for everything. They paid for absolutely everything. And now they, they're charging this much. Well, it's because the costs have gone up so much. And there's so much, <clears throat> so many dynamics that go into the cost of healthcare. Okay. One other thing I can throw out there as far as the cost of healthcare too, is that you guys know supply versus demand. Okay, as your demand goes up, okay, um, well, let's, we can even just go, um, as sub demand goes up, your supply goes down, and all, all this good stuff. Let's go demand versus money. As your demand rises, your cost rises, okay? So now with most, with, um, with everybody having to help, have health insurance, some of it, um, some of it subsidized by the by the government, your cost might be going up as well. That's what they're saying also is happening with um, college tuition. The demand is going up um, because more people feel that they need a four-year four degree and there's more grants, there's more scholarships and stuff than there's ever been. So then there's some theory out there that they feel that, that, um, that the cost is going up largely because of that, okay? <clears throat> So, sorry. <clears throat> okay. Um, another thing that, that we should talk about here is just how this copay works. Let's say if we've got a $900 deductible, okay, and a 20% copay, okay, and we have a bill come in that's $3,000, okay, well, they're going to say we're only going to cover $2,100 of that. Okay. Now what they do is they're going to split that up into 20% mine, 80% theirs. So 20% of this is $420 and they will pay the rest. So I, for that $3,000 bill, will pay the $900 and I will pay $420. Okay. Now if there was another, say $2,000 bill, my $900 has already been paid for a deductible. That's per year. So they're just going to go ahead and split this up for me. That's going to be $400. And then they're going to call, they're going to pay the rest, which is $1,600. Okay. So then they will add up what I've paid out of pocket, $9,420, $400. And they'll keep track of that. <clears throat> and I want to say that mine is $7,000 max out of pocket. So then that's when this, <clears throat> say I've met that $7,000 max out of pocket, that there's been enough of these, that say then when I get another $1,000 bill, I pay zero and they pay a thousand. Okay? <clears throat> so it gets kind of complicated. One of the things that's majorly adva advantageous to a health, having health insurance is you might get charged $5,000 for something and then it'll go to the insurance company they'll go, nope, we're not going to pay $5,000 for that. You've, you've charged too much. We're going to knock it down to $3,000. So they kind of a little bit act on your behalf to say, no, we've got a contract for this, this procedure to be this expensive. Okay. Let's go back to homes a little bit. One thing that um, <clears throat> that was left out of several people's um, uh, thing about cost, what makes home insurance cost more, um, is uh, the the value of the home. Okay, as I look through these, um, the value of the home is what is um, is the biggest impactor. So if I've got a house that's only worth $30,000, my insurance rates are going to be low. 
if I have a house that's worth $200,000, my insurance rates are going to be higher. Okay? Now, <clears throat> here's the, one of the things I want to talk about with homeowner's insurance. Well, the, another thing that I didn't see in some of yours was if you have a fireplace or not, that's going to go ahead and raise your prices. Okay? If you have an asphalt roof, it's going to be more expensive than if you had a, uh, um, a steel roof. Okay? Because they're thinking, what elements does this house possess that's going to make us have to pay out more or pay out less? Okay? Um, <clears throat> here's the thing that I really want to talk about health insurance, or health insurance. I'm sorry, um, homeowner's insurance. You have to have homeowner's insurance if you have a loan. Let's say your loan payment to the bank each month just for the loan itself, just for the loan is, let's say, I don't know, $900 per month. Okay? The bank is going to say, you have to have insurance. And we're so concerned about you having insurance that we are going to pay that bill to make sure that your house is always covered. Okay? So then what's going to happen is say if your insurance costs for the year are, let's keep, keep it easy, $1,800 per year, which is $150 per month. Okay? They are going to charge you this. They are going to add that to your monthly loan payment. They're going to put it in a, what's called an escrow account. And when your, when your insurance comes due, they will pay it. Okay? So when you look up loan payments, the, all the all the calculators on your on the ca on the on the internet stuff will give you your monthly loan payment, and then you're going to have to do this for insurance. That's also going to be part of your monthly loan. Okay. Now another thing that they can take your house for is if you don't pay taxes. Our taxes on our place is about three thousand dollars per year. Actually, it's a little bit more than that, but I'm going to keep this so it's easy to work with. Okay. So that is. I just said I'd keep this easy to work with. I think it's $250 per month. So guess what? Since they can take your house from you if you don't pay your taxes, your bank is going to pay your taxes for you. So they're going to add $250 for your taxes. And that's going to go into that escrow account. So your $900 monthly payment immediately becomes a $1,300 monthly payment. So that's why when you're looking at a house, you need to take in consideration, what's the insurance rate usually run? What are my taxes? Because that's all going to add up to what is your monthly payment on a house. Okay? So escrow, ugh, I hated escrow. And I want to say that that should be, a, um, that should be spelled differently. Yeah, it's a C, not a G. What am I doing? Escrow. Crow, okay, as the bird, okay? Um, we were so happy when we paid off our house. We said, you know, we we're now going to pay these amounts ourselves. Once we got our loan, our, our loan payment down enough, we made a deal with them that, hey, we're going to pay our own escrow account. Um, that's just how it is. We'll talk about loans more next. So that's what's coming up next, folks. Hopefully you learned something from all that. Um, I am going to want this for your assignment today. First question, okay? Question A, how do you feel about the male versus female and healthy versus not cost on your health insurance? B, okay, I want you to look up um, loans. And I know you guys have asked specifically about student loans, okay? So I want the different types of student loans, okay? And, um, and I'll go ahead and cover the stuff with home loans, okay? I would just, uh, that's what I want by Tuesday night. But I also want you guys to have a conversation with your parents as far as what loans do they have? And how do they feel about loans? How do they feel about 
the idea of being debt free. Okay. Your next lecture will be Wednesday, and I'm almost out of time, so I'm just going to keep talking till they till it's done. Um, but yeah, loans and health insurance; those are going to be parts of your life. Loans, they could be for cars, they could be for business, they could be for homes. But the things that's going to impact right now for you guys, student loans, okay? I want to know the difference between all the different types of student loans and how that varies from a grant and how that differs from scholarships, okay? Thank you guys for doing a great job. Two more weeks, this week and next week. I want to talk about loans um, and then... Oh, I'll have to look back at your list for what's what's going to happen next week, okay? Love you guys. Miss you guys. Have that done by um, Tuesday night. See you Wednesday.